So for example, if I zoom in a bit here, uh, you'll notice uh, we have a streaked object here. This is a, a trailed object. And just looking at it, you do not have any way to know, is that a, a near-Earth uh, asteroid or is it an artificial uh, satellite? So just really quickly, I can show the step on how to uh, identify this. So I go here, I'm on the first image and I can double click, uh, zoom in a bit more, and um, then right click and choose create observation. So I'm just creating three measurements basically. So that's the first measurement. And I go to another image and repeat the, that same process. So this will be my second uh, measurement here. And go to a third image and this will be measurement number three. So I now have three measurements and I can click this button here, add to target list uh, to basically create a track uh, for this object. And I just go ahead and give it the default uh, designation, click OK. So having done that, uh, I now have these three measurements for one object and I can select them and choose, uh, I can right click and choose a uh, view which will present another window here. So these are the measurements in the MPC 1992 format, which is perfect for submission into the satellite identification tool. So there is an online variant of this tool. And so here, uh, for example, uh, this is the uh, web page, and I'll have a link to it in the description below. But uh, essentially uh, what you do here is uh, you can paste the measurements into this form and then click the button Find Matching Artificial Satellites. And if you uh, are fortunate, uh, I say that, uh, if you're lucky, then uh, you'll go ahead and have a, a result returned here uh, immediately. Now, maybe you're looking for it to be a near-Earth asteroid, in which case you might be unlucky and it says it's an artificial satellite. But either way, this is one of two possible outcomes. Uh, so outcome one is it does identify it and consequently you know that this is a rocket booster or an artificial satellite. So here is the NORAD identifier and you can see here there's another identifier, so 2291. So uh, that gives you some information and you can copy uh, this information into Google and then it will return other websites which can give you even more information. So uh, this is just one example. Uh, I mentioned uh, two possible outcomes. So the other outcome is it does not return a result. So in that scenario, uh, that could be one of two reasons. One is it truly is unknown as an artificial satellite. Uh, the other is you need to have better, uh, more precise measurements. So let's go ahead and take a look at another uh, object in this field of view. So again, I mentioned that actually several uh, that I found here. In fact, you can already see here's one right here, and then there's another one right here. So, so already three total that I've shown. Uh, so let's take a look at this one here. This is another uh, fast mover. And indeed, these are fast movers because I mentioned these are 10 second exposures. Uh, they, so they exhibit streaking, which is 10 seconds, and the plate scale is 12 arc seconds per pixel. So very undersampled. So if you have an object exhibiting streaked uh, uh, pixelation uh, across this kind of plate scale, then indeed uh, it is moving fast, especially with such a short exposure time. So uh, let's go ahead and zoom in a bit more. And I'll go ahead and create uh, measurements uh, for this object here. So measurement number two and a third measurement. So again, I'm not being very precise, as you can see. So I'm hoping to get that second outcome where it fails to identify, and I'll show you how to fix that. So here's that second object. Click View, and then I will submit these for identification. So the hope is that it will fail to identify. And uh, well, it actually, even with that lack of precision, it found it and identified it as a, a rocket booster. So you can see that here uh, when you have the RB uh, in the uh, identification. 
So that's object number two, possibly object number three. We might get lucky and that will not uh, identify it. So uh, let's go ahead and see if we can. Well, we've only got two images here, so I want to choose a different object. Uh, as it happens, there is another one here. So as you can see, this is object number four. Again, all on the same field of view. Uh, so that's uh, quite a large number of uh, artificial objects. So I can go ahead and choose an observation here, create another one um, here, and finally a third one here. All right, so once again, three measurements. And let's go ahead and see if it will identify or not. And it did not. So uh, that's good because now I can show how to hopefully fix that. So what I'm going to do is go to that first measurement. And as you can see here, uh, what we want to do ideally is to have it centroided as well as possible. So I'm going to go to this modify observation and I want to create a ruler. So I right click and choose create ruler, this first option here. And I just choose the start and end points. And then I can say, okay, I want to go to the midpoint. And then having done that, I want to choose the second option uh, which is recalculate centroid using current pixel location. So you can see that it moved the centroid a noticeable amount. So we were not very precise with that first uh, pass. I'll repeat the process again for the uh, second measurement. So right click, modify observation, create a ruler. And so here I have the endpoints once again, go to midpoint and not very much change on that second measurement. So now we'll try measurement number three. Repeat the process. And again, measurement three, uh, very similar to two, uh, very little change. So hopefully it was just that first measurement that needed fixing. So now we go ahead and try once more with the submission. And as you can see, now it is happy. So this is Navstar 53 uh, USA 175. So this is a, a GPS satellite. And so in any case, uh, you can also see here the computed motion. And um, anyway, um, a very, very uh, basic approach here. I, I mentioned this is manual uh, method, but uh, um, it, it can be useful if you come across a streaked object and you think, well, maybe this could be a near Earth asteroid. Well, maybe, or it could be an artificial satellite. So anyway, I hope you found this video to be somewhat uh, informative and interesting. And again, I, I know for sure I found it interesting to, to see uh, just how many, in fact, here's even a fifth one, right? Uh, how many uh, artificial uh, objects uh, you can find in uh, such a wide field of view. This is a 135 millimeter lens at f2.8 and uh, even though it doesn't really reach a very faint uh, limiting magnitude, it still picks up uh, quite a lot of um, uh, satellites. So um, it can be fun to play around with that, uh, I think. Um, so again, thanks for watching and stay tuned. Uh, I've got other videos uh, on the way. Until next time.